uh, I was a simple question that why why do we see that the Indian writers are not being able to uh, uh, make uh, you know global you know trends you know uh, as far as global market is concerned you know as far as writing is concerned you uh, gave the example of Dan Brown but why can't we produce Indian Dan Brown who can go global and pick up some kind of sale so and it's a get? damn good question hmm. it's a damn damn good question uh, I genuinely believe that unfortunately what has happened is the publishing ecosystem in the West is used to writers from India only producing award-winning work. In other words, for the longest time, even in India, in India, a publishing industry was primarily offshoots of the Western publishing houses. The big publishing houses had their offshoots here in India. And uh, for the longest time, it was taken for granted that if you were a writer from India, then either you were meant to be writing a family saga, Poverty. Or you were meant to do some sort of slum porn, as it were. Or otherwise, you were expected to write a how-to book on how to make a good biryani. I mean, so those were the classes of books that you wrote. Um, the ones who broke out from that were the ones who uh, were writing literary fiction. So whether it was the Salman Rushdie's of the world or the Arundhati's of the world, those were the ones who then began to be appreciated as a result of which what happened was that every publisher was looking out for the next, the next Rushdie or the next Arvinda Diga or what, what have you. As a result of which commercial fiction writing never took off in our country. It was always there in Hindi. You always had the pulp crime thrillers of the Surendra Mohan Pathaks selling in lakhs. But English fiction, which was commercial is fiction that writing... Is changing now? Should that and change? And that is... It's only the last 10 or 12 years so where that has awareness. changed. And you know the funny thing? The one who had really tried to change this was probably Satyajit Ray way back in the 1950s and 60s with Feluda. And unfortunately, we did not give him his due. Hmm. We never made that series popular. So I think that has only changed in the last one decade. So give it another decade, sir. Give it one more decade. One, one hopefully, last question from the hopefully I will make you proud by we'll seeing Ashwin up. Sanghi books on the international book stands. Yeah. I will try. Ek, ek wo, uh, go ahead. Uh, if one more question together we can take, then he can answer. Hello, sir. Hi. Uh, sir, it's a great to hearing you. So my question from you is uh, that when you, were, when you were start your career, that time maybe you also... Uh, maybe some people also criticize your writing. So when someone criticizes the writers, then they can uh, lose their confidence at that time. So how can we overcome with this problem? Very good question. Okay. She's a young writer. I, do you want to become a writer? Do you want to write? But are you scared of the trolling and the criticism? So when, when, I, was, when I had just r finished writing the Rosabal line and I had started sending out my manuscript, a lot of very nasty feedback would come back. And, you know, on a board in front of my desk, I had some numbers written in front of me. And people used to come into my study and wonder what those numbers were. The numbers were 12 and 28 and 30 and 33 and 38. Uh, and later on, I explained that 12 was the number of times that J.K. Rowling's first Harry Potter book was rejected. And uh, uh, 28 was the number of times that... Uh, the great work uh, Jonathan Livingston Seagull was rejected. 30 was the number of times that Stephen King's carry was rejected. 33 was the number of times that Chicken Soup for the Soul was rejected. Uh, so I, I used to always say that, hey, listen, now you're getting close to that final figure. And by the time that my score came at 47, I was very proud of myself that I've beaten the pants of J.K. Rowling. So the point is, How you need you to write after forty-seven you need rejections. To, Didn't you think, yeah, chodo, I can't write. Maybe I'm not a good writer. To answer your question in particular, uh, is that you need to figure out a way of being able to give a positive spin to whatever is going on around you. When I wrote the Rosabal line, it was a book which was appreciated tremendously by the critics. Yes. One of the very respected newspapers of the South wrote a glowing review. They said, we do a great disservice to Ashwin Sanghi by comparing him to Dan Brown because Ashwin Sanghi is so much more. And I was damn proud of myself. <laughs> but the Rosabal line didn't sell many books. On the other hand, the second book came out, Chanakya's Chant. The very same newspaper wrote a half-page review 
completely trashing the book. They said Ashwin Sanghi and his book have the intellectual caliber of Winnie the Pooh. So, and that book took off. It's one of your most popular books. And it books became the there. most popular. In, so, please remember, the critic's job is to find holes in your plot, in your story, in your writing. But the ultimate critic is your reader. The Are relationship. you scared of controversy, Ashwin? Uh, because or today, a lot of them want controversy. It, it helps them sell more. But you don't have a controversy given you write so much Controversies, on Pooja, controversies do not happen. They are created. It is a very conscious decision when someone decides to create a controversy so that his book or movie can sell. If you decide that you are writing a topic out of a genuine interest in that topic and you are approaching that topic with a sense of awe and respect, you can't automatically end up with a controversy unless you want it. Is that all the time we have for? Because I would love for this conversation to continue. But we, I, you have a question? Lovely. We have uh, two more questions. Now, ask me. Go on. Yeah. And try and two more, two, three more questions we, we could take. take. Yes, yeah. lovely. Go, uh, Nabila, you want to ask something? I, I basically wanted to ask on behalf of myself also. And a lot of the youngsters I see here, you know, we... We barely have any focus or attention in today's di digital That's age, right? Yes. To read a whole book, uh, you want to sift through. That's more or less our attitude. And now you have apps that help you take out excerpts from a, uh, from a book. But is it possible to do that with books uh, of Indian authors? Because you you're are so in-depth and detailed. Can you really, you know, surface level skim stuff? No, I, I, I don't think that is possible. But there are other alternatives like mm. for example you could convert for example a book into let's say hypothetically a video game uh, and so an essence of that product could emerge as a result of you being able to absorb it in a very different format mm. or for example OTT has suddenly resulted in a spurt of books getting converted into the visual medium mm. but yes what you said is uh, uh, spot on that attention spans have declined. Yeah. Uh, you see uh, news going viral with a one minute clip, right? Yeah. We, we struggle to do news we, condensed yeah. in one minute. Can, can a so, Ashwin Sangvi's book be condensed to you, multiple one minutes? If you read the Rosabal line or Chanakya's chant, the average chapter was about roughly 3,000 words. Mm. If you read any of my later books, they are all under 1,000 words. So that reflects the declining attention span. 